Welcome to the Win Make Give podcast. This is Ben Kenny, joined with Chad Himes and Bob Stewart today, and we are diving into part five of the Win Make Give Influence and Persuasion series. Part five, ladies and gentlemen, we've already covered a variety of subjects like what, Chad? Well, we've covered reciprocity, we've covered scarcity, we've covered authority, and today, Ben... We're going to talk about what? Consistency. Why? Because we consistently bring the same message again and again and again. Because people want to be consistent in their messaging, consistent to their values, right, their beliefs... Consistency is a tool used by marketers, salespeople, recruiters, businesses, spouses. spouses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the whole gamut. It's being used on us and we're using it against them. There are three types of commitments. Number one, the voluntary commitment. Number two, the active commitment. And number three, public commitments. Ben, let's dive into those a little bit. Explain them a little bit more to everybody listening. A voluntary commitment would be when you ask somebody like Bob a question. Just out of curiosity, Bob, how do you feel about the environment? Is it important to you and your family? Right? You're asking a question, and he volunteers and says, yes. Active Think about it based on their actions. Bob is recycling. He, he's actively, right, publicly in some way, make it a commitment to improving the environment. Okay. The last one, public, Bob stands out on the top of his recycling bins, <laughs> and he says, save water, recycle, save the world, right? He's making a public statement for him to stand by. Okay. Now, consistency is a tool used all the time. There's a lot of different tactics used in persuasion and influence that forces us to be consistent with our previous statements or previous actions. Bob, let me give you an example in Robert Cialdini's book that talked about how a specific organization used consistency to get people to take action. In this situation, they went to a neighborhood and they said, would you be willing to put this sign in your yard? You know, let's say it's two feet by one feet, right? That says safe driving. We support safe driving or whatever that, whatever the cause might be. The vast majority of people said, no, I thank you. That's awesome. But no, no, keep the sign out of my yard. Well, In the next neighborhood over, let's say this is where Chad lives, they went to that neighborhood a couple weeks prior, and they did one thing different. They walked up and they said, hey, Chad, my name is Ben. I'm with the Safe Driving Institute of Bellingham, Washington. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to support our cause by putting this little three-by-five card in your window that just says drive safe or safe driving. It's not a big ask, right? What's, what's the downside of, of Chad putting a little card in his, in his window? As long right. as it doesn't stick to the window, because my wife would not like the stuff left over from the sicky stuff. Small ask. Small yep. ask, yeah. So they go back to that same exact neighborhood two weeks later. They go to the people that had already agreed to put the little placard in the window, and they ask them, would you be willing to put a two-foot by one-foot sign in your yard? Well, the vast majority of people did. Why? Because they wanted to be consistent with the statement they had already been making, which is, we support this cause. It's fascinating. Start small, right? When, when nonprofits call you and they're looking for, for money, they say, hey, Chad, can I have a million dollars? No. No, I don't know you. <laughs> Chad, just out of curiosity, could you spare a dollar a day? Could you spare one dollar? Could you sure. spare nine dollars and ninety nine cents so that you know this 
this so dog will not be homeless. Or I was going to say, this is that commercial that I see on TV for the puppies, and they just ask me for like 99 cents a day or something like that. It's just that small, consistent donation that I'm making that adds up to the same amount of money if they would have just come to me and said, would you give us X I, amount? Uh, I donate to some political causes, and one of the tactics that they'll use is it always starts with like you can make a just a $5 one-time donation, Right. And then it'll come back and it'll be like, you can donate five dollars once a quarter. Right. And then it'll be like, you can donate five dollars once a month. And then it'll be like, you can donate ten dollars once a month. Right. And it's just this steady walking up where I they got their foot in the door. Right. It's the foot in the door technique. They got their foot in the door by me agreeing that, yeah, sure, five dollars one time, no big deal. Well, Bob's already said that he believes in that organization, right? I counter every donation that he makes to the, <laughs> to the other side of the equation personally. But yes, yes, I will see your $5. Oh, wait, this is not the competition. This is the consistent message. Here's an example. In marketing, you walk up and they're like, hey, would you like a piece of fudge? Oh, well, who would say no to that? Not I, <laughs> right? I, I, have the, I take a bite and they say, what do you think? Right. That is good fudge. And they come back and say, how much would you like? You've already said that it's good fudge. Yep. You've already said that you like it. If you want to be consistent with that message. So now you're, you're going along those statements that we've made. You're leveraging those statements that somebody has already made. Yeah. Here's another one. And this wasn't in Robert's book. I think it was in Blink or, or Malcolm Gladwell's book or something like that. They, they were talking about children who believed they were bad at math. And I was always one of those children that said, I'm not super good at the math. Problem is, I wasn't super good at the spelling or anything <laughs> else. But when parents made one change, no matter what score the children got on math, if they just consistently said, you're really good at math, right? Math, math is something you can do. If they simply gave that message, the children actually ended up being consistent with that message. Over time, they become good at math. It's called social labeling, right? Social labeling. There was a study done by a PhD student at Yale that basically took uh, people that had, had previously donated to a charitable cause, and they called those people back. And basically, so they, they, they donated previously to this cause, when they called them back, they took two tacks, right? Two different ways they approached them. In one way, they just called them again and asked for a, another donation. In the other scenario, they called them again. And when they asked for the donation, they simply labeled them by saying, in the past, you had given a charitable donation to us and we know you're a charitable person. Would you be willing to make a $5 donation today? The difference, it was dramatically increase the people willing to make that donation simply by being labeled as somebody who is charitable. Sounds like a quote that I was reading over here, Ben, uh, attributed to Aristotle. So it goes back that says, we are what we repeatedly do. So if I'm a charitable person, I'm going to stay consistent to what that is. Maybe we are what we consistently say we are. Yeah. Or we tell others that we are, right? I think about that. I tell people that, you know, one of my goals is to give money away. So when people to charities, right? So when people ask me, yeah, let's be clear to charities. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> when, when I see a cause, I tend to give to it, even if it's not a massive amount, I tend to give to it because that's, I'm being consistent with my message that we win, make, and we give, mm -hmm. give around here now charities and businesses, but let's say charities, they do things like get you to sign a petition. It's not for the purpose to get you to move the cause forward. It's to get you to mentally commit mm -hmm. to that cause. Because on the next line is, put your email address, right? And then the next step goes, which is the dollar or whatever that might be, right? Yep. Even I read another article that said people are more convinced that a horse is going to win a race after they place the bet on it. Right. In fact, they're more likely to increase that bet after they've made an initial one. Think about that in the stock market. You buy a couple shares of something, right? And you start, even if it hasn't changed, you're like, you know, I should probably put a little bit more in here. It's going to win. It's going to win, right? Yeah. No fact, no data. But we've already said in our minds that we believe in this particular thing. So let's talk about some of the tactics of consistency, Chad. And we've kind of already addressed the yep. first one, which was 
start small and build. You've also addressed the second one, which was leveraging previous statements and commitments. You were talking about the person asked you, so what'd you think about the fudge? Well, it's good fudge. So they're going to leverage that you said that, or we've already made a commitment to donate in the past, as Bob had said. So they're going to leverage that, figuring out that we're going to be consistent as to who we are. Chad, the last time that we spoke, I remember you saying that this was important to you. Right. That would be a sales strategy. Okay. Bob, I understand that the last time we spoke, you said getting your children into a better school district was something that was important to you. Is that still something that you care about? Now, I could have said, Bob, do you, do you, would you like to move still? And you could say, no, plans have changed. I didn't right. say that. I said, Bob, last time we spoke, you said... It doesn't matter your what children. you say after that. It's that because you're holding him consistent to his statement. Not just that, but think about the question. Your children, you want your children in a better school district. I'm committed to that, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. But by saying, no, I don't want to move, what he's not saying or what he's actually saying is, I don't care what school my kids go to. That's a different question. Yes. And the key to it, though, is to start it off with the, he's already said this to you in the past. That's the leveraging his previous statements that you're talking about. What's the third one? It's involving other individuals in furthering commitments. So, Ben, that's going to be when I go to Bob for that donation, talking about how you've already donated in that situation and bringing you into that conversation even. Okay, number four. Okay, number four, we're going to make commitments that require actions that are out loud and in writing. You already talked about this. It's signing that petition. It's doing those things. I'm putting pen to paper to actually make this commitment and be of this commitment. Think about like getting somebody to wear your $5 t-shirt. Yeah. You're kind of voting for something right there to put a, a sticker on your car. I had a professor in college and, I, and you, everybody had that first year professor that hit them with something. And he asked us in class on the first day, he said, look, you know those sandwich boards that you see the people wearing? He says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to wear the sandwich board that is promoting my store. And he says, I'd like you to pay me uh, $20 for the day so that you can wear my sandwich board and walk up and down the street. And we would all look at him and say, why would we pay you $20 for that? And then he would pick somebody out in the class and say, well, how much are you getting paid by Nike to be wearing their shoes or their hat. And it's like, well, wait a minute, right? So it's getting that out loud commitment from people. Yeah. Here'd be an, here'd be an example in, in the world would be asking somebody a question in a classroom or you're presenting to a group of potential customers and you just call on somebody and say, Bob, just out of curiosity, is is your financial security and your future retirement something that's important to you and your you and your spouse? Now, what yeah. does he have to say? I just called on him. I just say, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, right. Now, Bob, oh, do me a so, favor. Take take a piece of paper and write down the amount of money that that you would like to make per year in retirement. He said it out loud. He's just written it down. He's taken an action. I've asked him to make that commitment. I'm going to see if this works. <clears throat> Hold on a sec. <clears throat> ben, you've said you're committed to your health and improving that, right? This guy. This guy. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> <laughs> Make those commitments public, which was another thing I was just attempting to do. Another thing you just showed in the example of getting Bob in front of a group of people to make that commitment public. So it's not just you and Bob talking and he can deny it ever happened. Yeah. I tend to do this to myself because I like to persuade and influence myself to do things. Boy, so when I know to. I want to do something, I'll make a statement publicly in social media or I'll tell people that I respect and peers, this is what we're going to do because I can lie to myself every single day. Yeah. But when you make that statement to somebody you care about, you aren't going to do that. What's number six? Number six is measure commitment levels. Just out of curiosity, Bob, you had said at some point that this was important to you, I failed to ask you how important it was to you. What would you sacrifice in your life today to make sure that that was something that happened? That is measuring the commitment yep. level. Just out of curiosity, how important is it to you, Bob, that your children get a decent education? On a scale of one to 10, rate for me how you need blank. Yeah. Yeah. And the last one, is breaking conflicting 
commitments. Because I might agree to all of these things, Ben, yet if it doesn't work with my marriage, which is my number one commitment, you're not going to get anything out of somebody in this situation. So you're talking, we've got to work through the other commitments that they might have made that are counterintuitive to the one we're taking them through. Bob, you just said that now wasn't a good time for you to move. And you said that getting your kids into a new school district was really important to you. Just out of curiosity, which one's most important? Mm. Right? Getting people to take action. Starting with your foot in the door, small, and building upon it. How can you get people in your company, your customers, your leads, and your marketing to get people to make a statement or to make an action that forces them to be consistent over time with their actions? We've, uh, we've done this a lot. And, and a lot of the businesses we've built, Ben, have been built on this idea of start small and build with these people, right? I think of Active Rain as that, and we talked about like a freemium model being something like that, where there's really just a commitment for them to be be there and show up, right? And then you start to to get commitment for them to pay for things. And uh, in some of our software businesses, we'll, you know, we've got price points that allow people to start small, right? And then as we've we've built authority with them, they want to remain consistent as we've rest. Uh, rest of, reciprocated <laughs> sure <laughs> as we've reciprocated with them they they want to stay consistent with our company and they start to build on the products that we use and we, we're talking all the time about like you know average dollar value per customer and trying to raise that number and and a lot of this is, is us influencing them to be consistent in their business for example and continue to build on those tools that we provided for them so consistency is a super powerful you know way to influence and persuade people mainly because of the psychology for most people that they want to be consistent in the things they do in their life. They don't want to make change. They, no. they don't like change. They don't want to deal with change. So once they've locked something in, they want to stick to it. I mean, how long did you have the Columbia record deal? They got you to start small, just a penny. <laughs> and you got to pick nine, 10, 15. I don't even remember how many cassettes or CDs or whatever it was at the time that we all you got. You were picking eight tracks, Chad. Don't all right, lie. I, maybe. All right, so- <laughs> Then what would end up happening is then it was once a month. You were, and you just it took you forever. I mean, we talked about this back in the wealth series. How many people have subscriptions that they're still paying for that they don't use because they just want to stay consistent? Right? We've talked about just before we were starting this one, Bob. We were talking about about your sports fandom, for example. <laughs> yeah, I should have given up on the Mariners a long time ago. Yet why don't you? Well, you, the 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 psychology of it would say. Um, I committed to being a Mariners fan when I was five years old. I didn't know any better. My dad tricked me, but I, I, I've got to stay that thing, right? Like just our brains are designed to, to, to be committed to that thing. I've been committed to now for 37 years. Right. Yet nowadays, the generations today, they're not committed to a team. They're committed to a player. Mm. They follow LeBron wherever he's going to play. That's what matters. It's not what team he's on, it's him they're following. Sure, and that's that's just, they're making, a, they're making a similar commitment just to a different, you know, a different thing, right? Yeah, consistency is a powerful, powerful tool in the world of persuasion and influence. I asked Bob earlier as we were playing with this subject, Bob, do you care about the city you live in? Do you care about Seattle? Yeah. Yeah, do, do you care about the community and the jobs and the growth and, and how we're seeing? Yeah. And I was kind of tricking him into it. I was getting him to say, yes, well, you know, just out of curiosity, then I assume that you you support the Seahawks or the Mariners or whatever those teams, you know, might be. Because he wants to be consistent with all those answers. How would you say, yeah, yeah, I really care about the city, but yeah, I don't care about the sports team. Well, that is the city, right? Yeah. You got to be consistent in those answers. So, Chad, how do we end these calls? The same way we always do, Ben. We tell everyone to join us for the conversation that goes behind the episode on our Facebook group. That's facebook.com slash group slash win, make, give. And to make sure that you stay consistent in listening to our series that we are bringing you and all the episodes we have here at Win, Make, Give. Until our next episode, make sure you're washing those hands, wearing that mask, and as always, do good. <laughs>